Okay, right. In three, two, one, and rolling. Are you ready? Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, it's Michael Watts here, and if 19-year-old me could see what I'm about to do now, well, he'd be quite pleased with himself. Uh, I am with one of my favourite guitarists of all time, the astonishing Mr Adrian Utley. Um, you'll have known him from Portishead, but a number of other incredible projects, and we are here dicking about at a senior level <laughs> with yeah, a sick. 1958 Carina Flying V. <laughs> We've been left utterly unsupervised here at Gardner Holgate auction houses. And we've got this extraordinary thing. Now, it's a bit of a mystery to both of us because um, I, I had a Flying V as a, in, you know, in childhood, as, as so many of us do. I managed to almost break my ankle on the thing, jumping on stage, and I hit the, hit the back of my foot right <laughs> on that point. Um, and then I just put it down and got an SG instead. Um, so that we know that they're dangerous. Yeah. We know that they're very, very pointy. Well, you know, I don't know. <laughs> well, we're that. about to find out. <laughs> Not the sort of thing that you're normally seen with either, is no. it, Adrian? No, no. Um, no, they've never figured in my life at all, really. Right. I see them as, I mean, Albert King mm -hmm. um, and um, Dave Davis from The Kinks. Yes. I remember seeing film of him or something. It's in my mind anyway. Mm -hmm. um, was it a video to Waterloo Sunset? Or is it? I okay. Think, I seem to remember that. Looks super cool, though. Tell us in the comments below, obviously. Yeah. Um, part, of, part of what we've been uh, dealing with in the first few minutes has been how do you approach a Flying V when you are seated? You know, we've we've uh, you you've gone for the the sort of the Segovia stance. Yeah, I think which, uh, that feels I, safe because it's a valuable guitar. There is that. I do not, not want to drop it. <laughs> I do not want to <laughs> drop it at all. Um, the uh, the first V's came out with this sort of rubberized grip on the side. Which is there, isn't it? Yeah, and we've established That's not very sticky though. Maybe if we'd mm. worn corduroy trousers, could be. Um, that might have done the trick. It's all but useless. Uh, or there's there is the the kink. Um, sticking the V in your sort there? of... Yeah. Kind yeah, of like that. Yeah, that's kind of weird, though. Have it at about sort of nipple level, and then... That's too weird. It's too weird. Well, we'll, yeah. we'll stick with the Segovia stance for the time being. But what a thing. Carina, Braz, fretboard, and uh, original PAF pickups as well. Now, I've got it running into uh, my Cornford Hurricane. I've got some pedals here. What I really like about this is actually... Just look, sorry... Um, it, how worn it is I'm mm. al always interested in that it's been refinished right. but all this wear and you know tarnish all that stuff to me uh, makes it feel like a like it's been used for a very long time mm. and I really like that never really into guitars that are completely immaculate they're not interesting I don't think <laughs> you want something with a bit of mojo to it well yeah because somebody savvy. loved it played it mm. leaned it up against a wall which you can do with these. You can with these, <laughs> yes. that's true, yeah. <laughs> I like, uh, they're pretty powerful, aren't they, though? Yeah, that's Um, flying V riffs at all. We could write one together. Go on then. I, I think <laughs> the classic Flying V riff will probably be in uh, A. Bridge pickup, I'd suggest. <laughs> I mean, 
it's it's a, it's a tricky one to pull off, isn't it? Really, if if you're yeah, if you're a slightly sort of mild mannered, fairly introverted guitarist, yeah, and then you get this uh, this pointy doom machine. One of the joys of this guitar is that the scratch plate is Correct. absolutely immaculate. Um, it's got a slightly scary. It's, it's got a scary little point right here, which um, we've been told that if we damage that, that's probably about thirty thousand pounds worth uh, of value. Quite and liking the fact missing. that there's a screw missing, is there? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I like that. Even more terrifying. This yeah. is this is life on the sharp end yeah. of uh, of guitar demonstration. So 1958. I think it's fair to say that no one really knew what the electric guitar was for yet. No, probably not. You know, you had Cliff Gallop and um, right. you know rock and rollers who are absolutely tearing the end off it all. Mm. Um, you know. And it was in its embryonic time. This is a brave move. I mean, I'm not a studier yeah. of any of this stuff at all, actually. But, you know, strats and, you know, these strange-shaped guitars, which is strat, we're used to it now. But when it came out, it was nothing like a guitar shape, yeah, was exactly. it? And it was contoured for your arm and, you know, and it looked space age and it was painted in car colours, mm, you know. Right, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is Gibson going, yeah, we can do that too. We can go out there. Right. Because Gibson were mandolin makers and arch type makers, supreme mm. guitar uh, luthiers. Absolutely right. Entering another world, really. Oh, you know, I was thinking about this as I, as I drove down. What's really unusual is that these things came out in a natural wood finish. Right, they did, did they? Yeah, yeah because yeah. It, uh, they were using this uh, Carina Limbo wood. Oh, is that what that is? And, and, and so they, they all came out in, in the natural wood. The, the V and the Explorer, and who knows about the modern. You know, I don't want to open that particular <laughs> kettle of fish. Um, whereas everything else was coming out in sunbursts. Yeah. Some description from Gibson. So I, I'm, I don't know much about this either, but I think it, that we may be onto something here. That was this the first electric guitar that Gibson produced that came out in just a, uh, a natural wood finish? I don't well, know. the archtops did. Most of them were available in a in a non sunburst finish. Uh, uh, the right. bigger one, the better. You know, the more yeah. higher the end up. L five super force and yeah. things like that. Because yeah. it had really nice wood, so they wanted to show it, and people liked the natural natural finish. It was called, wasn't it? Also, Absolutely. you had gold top Les Pauls as well, which were quite spangly, weren't they? Very. Yeah. Imagine a gold top flying V. Do you yeah, need awesome. it? I mean, <laughs> no, probably it's, not. It's almost like this is this is treading a, a very thin line between, you know, absolutely in your face bolshiness and um, and and elegance. I'm, I'm quite taken aback by just how beautiful it is. It is, yeah. Just as a as a line, as a shape, it's it's really lovely. Right, I think I've got it somewhere near in tune, so I'm going okay. to. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Don't give it back to me. I'll get it out again. <laughs> to you Adrian and would yeah. you like some evil noises no I think oh. um, I'm quite interested in the fact that to play it not what you'd associate Play Dad Gad. Oh, really? No, it's your thing. Isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, I love it. Then. <laughs> Can get some lessons. I had to play it recently in a show I was doing, and I just mucked about until I found some stuff. Uh, yeah, that's it. Is that yeah. it? Yeah, that's uh, it. <laughs> Given a book called the Ultimate Guitar Book, 
and it falls open at two pages, the White Falcon page, for other reasons, which we'll yeah. go into in another, yeah. uh, another video, and the Flying V page. And this is the actual guitar from that. So I used oh, to really? show this to my parents and go, look, this anointed that thing. One, was it this colour when it was in that book? It was, yes, mm. yes, yes. It, uh, it, it looks exactly like it, uh, like it did in the book. Because it was supposed to be green, wasn't it? It was green at one yeah. point. Yeah, there's, uh, there's some green in the cavity under the scratch plate. That's completely... Thankfully, it disappeared. I mean, I can't imagine who would who would play a, a green flying V, Adrian. It would be Donovan. <laughs> I wouldn't know. <laughs> but yeah, he'd be seen with a, a green flying V. I have to say though that in Porter's head, I've always two things I've always wanted to be able to do. Three things actually. One, play a Jackson with a pointy head for the whole thing. <laughs> that would be so ridiculous. Absolutely. And be able to shred, which right. I can't. Just for about two seconds, two seconds in the middle of something nothing, and <laughs> to be able to do a moonwalk around the stage, oh, that would be you know, superb. to be just standing still like usual and then go woo and move across the stage. <laughs> How cool would that be? Well, it's, it's so great that you've still got things that you want to achieve, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's out of tune now, you have it. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've got a tuner right here, and uh, let's see what we can, we can achieve. I quite fancy sticking some backwards delay and stuff like that on. See yeah, totally. What, see what we can get. I like, um, it's powerful, isn't it? It is. It's weird for me to play a bit. I, um, I think, you know, the shape of it doesn't feel comfortable, and uh, I guess you get used to it, and it's ferocious, <laughs> isn't it? It's not like a Les Paul either. No. It doesn't feel like it. No, not at all. It's, it's funny, the, uh, I did a, a video with a, a Les Paul burst and... Uh, An old one, 59. Yeah, it was a 59. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful thing, the, the Morgan burst. Right. And I put a load of fuzz and backwards delay on it. Got an awful lot of hate. I mean, my, my YouTube channel is fairly, uh, <laughs> fairly gentle. You know, it's fairly pastoral, uh, acoustic stuff. Um, but once you once you prod the Les Paul community, or yeah, it's... maybe it wasn't so much the community itself. Maybe it was the, just the aspirational people with ideas of what did and did not constitute good manners. On yeah, Les Paul. <laughs> Why do? Yeah, I don't. I don't. Subscribe. Obviously, you don't either. But I really don't subscribe to any of that. Uh, Can't afford to. It's, no, it's got it's... better things to do. sensitive to to finger touch mm, it's dynamic you know, part of me is you know slightly worried about the thing <laughs> just sort of toppling off to one side but I, I had promised i'd inflict some sort of uh backwards irreverence. Ir backwards irreverence yes great name for a, a live album <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> what a thing. Stuff it through the tweed dam. Oh, we'll do that. We're going to stuff it through the tweed dam, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See what happens. <laughs> Hit the uh, the neck uh, neck pick up there. I'm going to have a bit of a go on the bridge. Yes, see, good plan. See what we've got on the see what we've got in the in between. Do you use the in between much? With the, uh, with very the... very rarely, hardly yeah. ever. And I sort of like the idea of it in a sort of let's find the sweet spot, but at the same time, who's got time for that? Yeah, You're on stage and, and where do you go? Well, you've got that thing that you know Clapton used to do, which I'm I don't know. Um, was it, it was this with the, oh, it's just mine. It was one of it? the you know middle pickup and one of the tone controls off yes. and the other one on. Yeah, uh, I think it doesn't particularly matter. Mm. Usually, turn the treble one down. I think I don't know. Um, is I'm not a big you know I'm not a big follower of his work really, but I've heard <laughs> about that and uh, um, <laughs> I just uh, um, and 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 you know it is a fantastic sound. Mm. It's definitely in a studio. It's definitely a, a world with the tone control down. It's a good world. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what I love about the mud switch on, on Gretsch. Is you get yeah. that whole sort of immediate bonk going on. Yeah, and it's always there. You know, you don't have to be sitting there going, "Oh, was it not quite?" No, it's that clunk. one. There's two, aren't there? It's yeah. like really muddy and not so muddy. Well, I, I don't know what it is. Or are they on, the same? On my Falcon, it's got really muddy at the top, and then I don't know if a bit of wiring has come loose or something. But if you knock it down, you get instant less pull. And I don't. Do you? Yeah, ah. I don't know quite. Why? But that works. So both switches knock down a bit of hot cake into an AC30. Yeah. And that's it. You know, I'm, I'm done. I'm having a lovely that's time. That's a good sound, yeah. yeah. I'm not in dad gad, but I'm enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. What I loved there when you were playing was the um, the little... Uh, Clusters. Yeah, little beats that you were getting yeah. there. Yeah. Little, little, uh, it's something I'm getting into at the moment a lot. Really? Yeah. Oh, I love that shit. I, this one here, I, I, do, I really like playing. You can go back to your bridge pickup, but I do like playing. I also like. I'm going to get Hello. sacked for this, yeah. <laughs> My mate said, I wrote, I wrote a piece for my, fit for my L5 and, uh, with it a quarter tone out. And uh, he said, Fuck, man, it sounds like you're tuning up. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm entering a new world. I'm, I mean, I'm going into a new space. Are you going microtonal? I am. I love microtones. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're in microtones always, anyway. By bending in blues, just in blues, you're in mm -hmm. microtones, aren't you? Exactly. And the more extreme the bend sometimes, the more vocal it is, mm. the more microtonal it ends up getting, doesn't it? Yeah. This sort of thing, I can do that all day. I mean, I appreciate it may be something of an endurance uh, event for viewers on YouTube. Just watch me do this. <laughs> on a, I'm know, digging it, I'm on digging a, it. A massively valuable vintage. <laughs> <laughs> Like but me. it's an instrument, isn't it? It's an know? instrument. This is what we can do. What would do. you do with this? I mean, what would you do with this? What is it? What is it that it is? Well, I won't be defined by a shape, so exactly. as you well know, I would be tempted, if 
Fuck it, let's, let's do what we do with it. It'll take a little while to settle once you've beasted yeah, it into yeah. a sus forty. Uh, it's a it's a flying V. You're not allowed to do that, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think you're doing? What, what am I doing? I'm committing all sorts of sacrilege, not for the first time, on my channel. <laughs> I don't really care. You know, I'll I'll tune my beast and quarter tone out. Fuck it, you just did. I saw you. Yeah, you saw it. <laughs> it was you? good. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You and my mum, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all that matters. We don't need the fuzz yet. Right. Can I turn it up a bit for yeah, you? Yeah, of course, man. Because I think, you know, you, what you you're doing... You think needs a bit more, yeah, bit I think more rice be, to it. Yeah, I but, think... But because you, you're using your, your dynamics, and I think this is a dynamic guitar, isn't it? It is, I but think, you know, I'm slightly scary of, scared of that, you know? It's, it's are fr you? It's frightened me a bit, to be honest. Don't that, you? on the edge of the breakup with that amp, and this, the, this guitar pushes it enough... You know, these PFs. Let's and they're dynamic. Get. Right. Well. If you play light, you'll get what you get and then play it out. this is uh, an exploration of the instrument but it's really interesting to see just how versatile from a musical instrument point of view this guitar actually is mm. you know, despite the fact that it's all pointy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so go on dad guy well, uh, yeah man get in there I don't even know see I don't immediately I can't I, there's nothing you I don't use, have a use reference drop D, right? yeah I, I love drop D so. okay. what I would do is just go feedback is brilliant that it will do it at this yeah. volume yeah yeah straight in that was the uh ren and cuff box of war small footprint oh we're getting some lovely oh, yeah. <laughs> get 
bit of loop pedal. Start yeah. doing it. Play us out, Adrian. Um, I don't know what to play. Well, I'm sure you'll think of something. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Ooh. hear it, yeah. That was delicious. I hope we've picked it up on the mic. Well, look, this was a massive amount of fun. We're now going to go and uh, record an episode of Life on the Fretboard for Fretboard Journal. That'll be coming up in the next few months. So, on behalf of me, thank you very much to everyone at Gardner Holgate. Thank you, guys. They're over there working very, very hard for you, as always. <laughs> Adrian Utley, it's been an absolute joy. Yeah, thank yeah, man. Thank you very much. No been great fun Let's do and, and really extraordinary to probably a once a, a, a lifetime experience for me to play one of those guitars i would not gravitate towards one of those in the shop but it's really really interesting uh, guitar i think isn't it yeah yeah it is it's totally wonderful alive thing. you know wonderful thing yeah thank you very much indeed and thank you to you for watching i'll see you in the next one until then stay tuned i know you will